Let's move on to the next topic. And I know there was a big fight night last night. Um, and we're talking about UFC 263. Yep. Now, we're not talking about that social media fight thing that happened the other night. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you caught that. I've seen, I seen clips of it. it was, uh... so, so I know we're going to talk about UFC. I just wanted to bring up that the TikTokers versus YouTubers is nonsense. Um, it was hilarious because like there was actually people bleeding and stuff. <laughs> like I mean, there, there was kids in there. Like you, you know, once they got punched and they started bleeding, like what am I doing? Why listen, am I doing man. this? <laughs> I, I listen, listen. I, I I'm a YouTuber. Invite me yeah. to the fight, right? Let me go, <laughs> let me go and fight. I'm a big dude. I'll take somebody out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I kept thinking about that. I was like, you know, what, these guys, these guys have tons of money, they, they, and. and Listen, these are the guys who make this content that's just ridiculously rich content, which, you yeah. know, they've got these crazy shows. They do these wild stunts. What are they doing fighting each other? What, what are they doing, you know, trying to be the UFC? So, anyway, I, I, I want to just comment how ridiculous that was. I don't want to get into a whole lot of it. They, they're really just following the Paul brothers, but the Paul brothers can actually fight, and they seem right. like they want to fight. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, they have it in them. The, you don't go eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather if you don't have something in you that, that you know what I mean? Like, a normal person is going to quit in that yeah. situation. So they're just doing it for the money grab. It's, it's and, kind of ridiculous. And the, and the one thing I watched, I, the guy quit. Kenji? Kenji? Some, that's his name. He's probably got like 10 million subscribers. He um, quit. <laughs> he quit. He quit in the middle of the match. He got punched in the stomach or something. And he's he put his that's hand up. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good now. Like, like come on, man. That, that's embarrassing. At least as a man. As a man in a fight, yeah, knock you me out. Go down. You go down. Knock, at least fake the knockout. Like let him hit you in the face, you fall down. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> hit him anyway. with the LeBron. <laughs> All right, let's let's switch gears. Let's talk about real stuff here. Let's talk about UFC 263, a fight breakdown, and uh, I mean, I watched the highlights, man, and yeah. I think that the the Vittori fight went the distance. Um, and the Moreno fight went uh, went with three, a, rounds. three rounds, right, with a submission. Yeah. So, uh, but, and there was other other stuff. And then Diaz was on the card, and you know, I didn't he was watch, bleeding everywhere. Yeah, I didn't watch. I didn't watch. I only watched these three fights live, to be honest. But um, let's start with the the Diaz Edwards fight. I thought thought it was a great fight. Kind of, it's it's kind of the, Diaz is getting to the age. He's a warrior, right? He's gonna go out on the shield, and clearly he's hard as hell to to uh, to knock out. But he's getting to the age where it's like, how how do you just let him leave a fight like this? You know what I mean? Like even in the press conference, and I've noticed it before, but like this press conference, he was like abnormally slow, like in his speech and like talking. And I'm like, eventually these these uh these beatings are gonna catch up to him, but in Nate Diaz fashion, yep. Leon Edwards is is the top prospect for 170, and he's probably gonna get a fi- uh, title shot. Probably, n- maybe not next fight for Usman, but fight after. Right. He won the first four rounds. Diaz starches the man with one minute left. Yeah. One minute left starches the man where he's just wobbling. You can see it in his eyes, like he's like, "Oh shit!" Like yeah, I got was- caught. I saw the fear in the highlight. I saw the fear yeah. in that man's eyes. He was like, I'm about to lose it. And he knew all he had to do was stay away from those punches. Yeah, yeah. And, and my God. I mean, he said he said it in the uh, the post, uh, post-conference post uh, interview, but I, I kind of thought of it as well. I was like, he probably was cruising that fifth and final round because he knew he watched them the first four. So he was probably just cruising, and then he got caught with, with a haymaker because uh, Diaz hit him with a nice one too. Got right through his guard, fa- yeah. like hit him, and then he did a good job of staying away. But I also thought Diaz just didn't attack. He could have finished that fight if he really wanted to. I mean, he had him on the ropes, and yeah. I don't think yeah. it would have been easy to finish Edwards. But he definitely had it to where he. I mean, he could have won the fight. And I was like, this is why people love Nate Diaz, and this is why he is a fan favorite because of moments like he's getting his ass whooped for four rounds. Yep. And starches the dude with one minute left to the point where the dude is running away at this point, stumbling, not even running, stumbling away just so he don't get hit again because it could have very well ended with it with 20 seconds left to the fight and Diaz come out a winner. And right. if Diaz wins, he gets a title shot right away because yeah, everybody yeah. loves him. 
I mean, I think Diaz ran out of steam. I think in watching the, the highlight, I think he ran out of steam. He was just as he was just as gassed as the other guy, but that he, he I, not that he didn't smell blood, like like because that's all he can smell is <laughs> blood all over his face. Um, uh, but no, D- Diaz, I don't think had a lot left in the tank. And uh, but yeah. when he stunned the guy, that's his opportunity to just go balls to the wall and just started pounding that guy because yeah. he was that guy was scared. Yeah, like I was sure. scared to lose that match. He had a lot riding on it, and Diaz had nothing to lose. Um, yeah. Edwards so, even said he's like because he's. Yeah. I think his last fight he poked somebody in the eye unintentionally, but it, it stopped the whole fight. And prior to that, I think he was like on a year and a half layoff, like he couldn't get a fight for whatever reason. So mm-hmm. he was like, "What is my luck? I, I'm I'm going four rounds. I'm I'm you know what I mean I, I'm cruising to a victory, and then I get stunned. I'm like, bro, if I would have lost this fight, like." Who knows what, what would happen to his career? Because, like, that's got to be disheartening. Like, you're cruising. But, like I said, it just shows Nate Diaz and his brother are, are made of different different, uh, different something. Yeah, they, no, no. Listen, th- those guys have something in the tank that I don't have, man, because I'm bleeding. I, I, I'd i be like, oh, look, I'm bleeding. That's it. I'm done. Time yeah. out, you know. Unless it's a street fight, then I'm going all out. But I'm going to get knocked out. That's it. <laughs> That's the um, way out. Yeah. So, so no, that was amazing to watch that last sequence for him. I just, um, it, it, that's what, that's the exciting part of Diaz. You're right. It, it makes, it just makes the show that much better for him. Um, and, and that's what sells tickets, man. The blood, the carnage, the, you know, the, the, the late last second sort of fury. I mean, you could, you could feel the crowd and the energy oh, just get behind the Diaz. energy. The energy in that building was oh. crazy. And like, you don't really notice it. I mean, you didn't notice it be- uh, before COVID because mm-hmm. you didn't know what it was like to not have fans. But watching sporting events with COVID, and I loved the the Fight Islands, and I loved, like, it, it was intimate. Like, you know what I mean? But when you feel the energy, like, you feel it through the TV, it's like, oh, shit, like, that's got to be a crazy feeling to because a lot of these guys fought on Fight Island, Fight Island or with no crowd in the apex. So yeah. Yeah. – Getting that feeling of having the fans, that's why I was also kind of surprised too because that was his moment to, to capitalize on, you know what I mean, finish the fight. And like you said, he probably was just gassed and he wasn't going to be able to, to put him down the way he wanted to. But I just feel like in that moment, in that stadium, you got to you gotta take that en- energy from the crowd and, and finish the fight. And, I mean, it was, good. it was a great fight. It was entertaining too even though Edwards was winning the whole time. Yeah, no. Diaz I, was doing a lot of trick, like a, a lot of like uh, nonchalant movements that you don't see a lot of people do. So it was, it was good. Yeah, nonchalantly get punched in the eye and get gaffed <laughs> open again. But uh, listen, I wonder, I wonder if that was from pre, like his last fight, because I think you know, his last fight was Masvidal. No, I think I think there was an elbow that uh, Edwards caught oh, him with yeah. oh. over the top, right? And it just it just open him up and then he just started squirting. squirting yeah. yeah. Which which to me like was catching him with a lot of elbows like when they're yeah. in the clinch and like as soon as they would uh break from clinch, he was hitting him like I think twice he caught him with like a back spinning back elbow and I'm like, damn that's gotta yeah. So it's definitely definitely elbows now that I think about it. Yeah and then and then the the switching gears to the Moreno fight like oh, Mexico's that, first first UFC champion. The, the emotions were there for that guy. And I, I, I I'm happy for something like that. I'm happy when 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 a guy who's fight you know fought hard to get to where he is finally gets the payoff, um, but the the dude is is I mean, it's, it's just spectacular. Like yeah. the the guy moves so fast. Yeah. Um, I heard uh, Chael Sonnen talking after the match that the speed in which he moves and the way that he dictates and I, I, what he said was is that the fight is a dance, right? And wh- it's one of them is leading and the other one is following, right? So he moved so quickly and was dictating that match that 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 submission was just there and that you can tell um that that guy uh figueredo was was like hey I, i'm done it's over <laughs> the figueredo thing so like i don't know if you saw their last fight oh yeah yeah but their last fight was probably one of the, the better fights you you'll ever see it was like it was fight just, of the year right yeah, yeah the, for yeah. sure it, was, it ended in a draw and that's why we got this rematch but um Moreno said after that fight, he went into a six-month camp and just prepared because he knew he was going to get the rematch because it was such an electrifying fight yep. that it was like there was no other. And plus, even Figueredo, like, I feel like as a champion, you kind of feel like they gave him – They, I mean, for him, it's not good to get a draw. 
for Moreno is dope because he didn't lose to the champion. He still gets he's still in contention for the fight. But for Figueredo, it shows that he didn't do enough to win because most of the time they give the champion the benefit of the doubt. Right. So I think it put a lot of pressure on Figueredo, but also there's a lot of talk about his weight cut. Like I think he he weighed in 40 seconds right before his uh his timer was up. Yeah. And like what got super emotional. And it, but the thing was, I think the fight and Moreno definitely uh, mentioned this in the post fight interview, but I think the fight was won during the whole week lead up to this because there was a lot of like figure eight was like trying to make their uh a narrative of like this is like no nah, I'm gonna finish this guy like he shouldn't even he he doesn't hold a candle to me like he shoves him in in the the ceremonial uh face off he shoves him and Moreno said like when he shoved me I knew I was gonna win that fight because you knew he was already in his head and there was a lot of like there had to be some kind of pressure or like I don't know it just felt like Moreno came into this fight way more confident than Figueredo did. And, yeah. and Moreno knew he was going to win it and knew he had the tools capable because he even mentioned that he he went for a choke, couldn't get it, and he's like, in the past, I would have, like, tried to force that choke. But he said, this time, I kind of just waited for him to, to give me the opening again, and then I got it, slipped it in, and finished the fight. Yeah, re- rematches tend to favor, um, you know, the, the guy who lost sometimes because th- there's just a lot more – that can be learned from from your mistakes, right? Yeah. So, so I, I I think I think in the first match, I think um, Moreno was was taken for you know lightly, I think, and yeah, and I think that's what. So so then you're on the defensive, and that's why I don't think he could he could muster enough to show that hey, I beat this guy you know solidly here. Um, I don't need to play, and I don't need to, to fight him again. And so Moreno did his homework, and I think I think it, that and his speed. I mean. Um, but, yeah. but I mean that that it was very impressive to watch him do that and and just sort of end the match and then the emotions and the the the, the fight the the post fight you know stuff you can see it, it it this was a labor for him this was a big big match for him yeah. um, it opens up huge opportunities for him and I'm sure the payday was great um, so he could I take do care think of what helped family. him what mm-hmm. helped him with the draw though was he got to experience what it was like to be a champion because of that fight because he didn't win but he didn't lose so right. they gave him more press i mean he be i'm sure he became a star after that fight i mean if he was i mean to me the kid is a star like you can see it in like how he talks in his interviews he's super humble he's nice like he wants to fight like he, he makes it clear he's fighting for his family and like he's just a likable dude he's, he's got a lot of star qualities and then after last night like the way he did it because it wasn't a it wasn't a close fight. It was a decisive. He won all three rounds pretty much. Yeah. And it was a decisive, like, I'm the champion now. And when he got up from the choke, I think that was, like, the most, like, <laughs> human moment because it, there was no emotion on his face. Right. It was just, like, he. I think he was just, like, living in it. When he did, like, his little walk around, like, he did a walk around the cage and mm-hmm. then, like, kneeled, and that's when the emotions hit him right there. And, like, yeah. you could just, like you said, you see it in it. You just feel it. Like I get, I'm a, when somebody wins something or like champion, like teams win a championship, I personally get like super emotional about it. I'm like, man, that's like, because I think I've always chased like something like that in my own life. So like seeing other people chase and and achieve their dreams is something that, you know what I mean? You don't, it's just, it's just a different feeling. And then the fact that he's Mexico's first mixed martial uh, UFC champion and like mixed martial arts, I mean, they're a huge boxing culture over there. But I feel like mixed martial arts has to be relatively new. I yeah. mean, I think they they mostly had like Mexican American champions before. Right, right. It's a, it's a lot of boxing. You know, a lot, you know, Mexico has great boxers, and that's a that's where they. But UFC stuff, MMA, yeah, yeah you don't see a lot of a lot of press for them, and it's it's huge. And you know what? It, it's I can remember, um, you know having the champion for the country right like a country celebrates behind that champion um it's a great great feeling i know he felt the pressure and he said it i think he said i'm a little chivato i'm a little chicano and i'm winning this title um i think in his post game uh press conference um so it's definitely he knows where he came from um the fear i always have with guys like this is that the money becomes more than they can handle 
Um, I hope it doesn't do that to him. He seems like like a pretty well well grounded guy, a family man. Um, but in this sport, you know, it will chew you up and spit you out, man. So hopefully he can stay on the path of of focusing on his craft and not being worried about the paydays and the money and the the extras that come with it. Um, because he's gonna be a guy that, you know, according to the the experts, the one guy to watch and to keep, you know, he's the champion now. And can he keep the title? Can he hold, you know, can he maintain um the, you know this this level of performance? So I think that's, that's it's honestly huge for that division too, because yeah. me and my roommate, we watch fights like pretty much anytime there's a fight, we're we're watching it or like talking about it. Mm -hmm. And me and him both were like, I only knew about this dude because of the I watch all the buildups to like big fights, especially like when I I, lo I love Adesanya, so I was like watching like the embedded and stuff, and you really see like uh, Moreno's character and like who he is, and that's what made me a fan this week. But like prior to that, I seen the fight before and I thought it was a dope fight, but I didn't know nothing about them, and I didn't know nothing about the flyweight division. Like there's nobody, like I, I don't even know who's gonna chat like personally, and like, maybe that's just right. me, my my lack of knowledge of it. But like I don't know who's next up for Moreno. You know what I mean? And it, and when he's gonna fight? Because he even said like he went in a six month camp. He's gonna he's gonna take some time off, for yeah. sure. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So like the things that you're saying that could be bad for him could seep in in this time off. Yeah. Well, he, he, and we're gonna talk about Adesanya and Vittori um, in just a second here. But the one thing I love about the UFC, and this is this is something that you, you just hit on there, is even like like for me, a casual fan of the UFC, I don't watch it all the time. If, when I sit down to watch it, the buildup and the and the hype video, right? The the yeah. the, the promo, yeah. I, I feel like I've known these fighters the whole time. I've been in the struggle with them, um, and so when I watched the promo videos for the for this fight, um, I was like, okay, I know his story. I'm ready to go. And who? And you're right. That that division. Who's next? Who knows? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> we just know that we got a, a, a compelling character in Moreno who has the title. Um, I do know I'm gonna watch him fight. That's all I right, know. Right. Who, whoever is against, I don't really care. Yeah, he, he's impressed enough to say, okay, now, now he's he becomes the the one of the guys to watch, right? And so when you see his name on the card, you go, I got to check that out. So, um, okay, let's talk about Adesanya and Vittori. Um, that one um, went to went the distance. Um, I'll give you my thoughts on it. I, I when I when I heard and I saw right because I. I love watching the the because I don't know a lot about MMA and I don't yeah. know you know how, how people sort of are coached, but I, I love the post game where I saw that they talked about Vittori really didn't have a game plan, and that's that was his downfall because Adesanya had the the leg kicks mm -hmm. to sort of stop those heavy punches from Vittori, and so that um, that was his game plan, and he he mixed them up, he you know oh. hit him hit him with a combo. And I think he improved his grappling, is what you know what I was reading and, and seeing. So th that's how Adesanya wins this match. And and so Vittori just didn't have a plan. He just was gonna do whatever he does and had I don't no think combo, right? I don't think it necessarily he didn't have a plan. It's just it seems especially at 185, right? Like yeah. for Adesanya, he's coming off a loss where he fought the 205 champion. And I think that's what gave Vittori a lot of – because in their first fight, he was very successful in taking him down. He didn't do no damage, but he was definitely successful in taking him down. And he had a better, I guess, game plan. But also, Adesanya wasn't Adesanya at the time. He was. I think that was his second fight in the UFC. Right. Adesanya at this point, and we've seen it, we seen it in this fight, right? Because Adesanya said he was like, I want to shut him out all five rounds. He's like, either I finish him, which Vittori seemed like a durable guy. He was taking Adesanya's best shots. And – those leg kicks, like you said, were definitely affecting him. Mm -hmm. And a, a normal person is going to, you know what I mean, it's going to it's gonna affect him. So it, it just shows who Vittori is. But I think Adesanya's skill, like, stops people in their tracks. I don't think that he didn't have a game plan. I just think he couldn't find the openings to execute his game plan. And Adesanya was picking him apart the whole fight. Yeah, I think Adesanya, when he, got, when he was grappling, when he got taken down, he was able to get out. And so yeah. I know he struggled with that the last match with him. And so that was a, an improved part of his game. Yeah. And, and you're right. The, the, the drop in weight, um, the weight change thing is huge. Now, I know um, there's a lot of speculation that he, Adesanya will, will, will move up in, uh, again and fight again for the, for the title. Um, but it's going to be a while. They said he's got to pack on some pounds. They got to you know, build up muscle. 
But, um, you know, I, I don't mind that the fights go the distance. Um, yeah. I, I just want I want action at the end. And so sometimes that's that's the disappointing thing when they go to a to a, a split decision like that. So, um, yeah, it was it, really it was a it was a one sided fight for the yeah. most part. Yeah, I mean there I, was one there was one skip. My bad. I'm sorry. Oh no no no. Go ahead go ahead go ahead. No, I was gonna say that there's one uh there was one moment where Adesanya was kind of in trouble where he almost uh Vittorio almost got a rear naked choke and I was working at the time so like I turned away from my screen and then like looked back. And saw him like in the position of the rear naked choke, and in my heart, I was like, "Oh no, this is how it ends." But w- by the time I, th- I finished that thought, Adesanya just you. I, I'm I'm assuming they were sweaty at that point. I, I believe it was like the fourth round. But he just like slips out of it, turns around, like kind of chokes him a little bit, and like at that point, it was over for Vittoria. Like I don't think he had like even he knew like there was there was nothing I could do. Like I had his back, and I had him in in a choke. Yeah. And he just slipped out like nothing, you know what I mean? So, it, it was it was a one sided fight, and like I, Adesanya went out, did what he did, uh, did what he said he was gonna do, and even at the end, Vittori was like, I, "I feel like I won that." Like, no, bro, you didn't. You don't. Know, no, no. You weren't Not close. close. To Not even close. Um, but you know, you know something about the UFC and, and this fight is, it's great to just go back to normal, and and the fight itself. They were great matches. They yeah. were great fights. Um, lots of great moments. And you're, you know, we talked about it early on. The 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 hype and the fight, you know, the fight feel, the big fight feel was back. Yeah. Um, and I know, I know these guys felt it. I know that the, you know, us watching it at home, we can hear it and we can feel it. You know, just sort of seeing it happen. And so this is what the UFC was missing. And and this is what the UFC does so well is again selling every single fight as being the big fight to watch yeah um the, i mean again you take I, I'll, I'll say it for me i am not actively watching ufc all the time but if i if i get if i catch a promo if mm-hmm. i catch something happening i'm intrigued and then i want to watch and then it becomes this universal thing that we need all of us need to watch it right hey you watching the fight this week look we're even talking about it here on a channel that talks about primarily about movies but it becomes the topic of discussion that has to be at yeah. least covered um to try to grab everybody because it's just it's just a great spectacle um now again the the three fights that we covered i i feel were excellent fights um they're all again, they're all it, really good yeah, they're all great. Um, you know, some of the undercard stuff, and I feel really bad because some of the undercard stuff is really good. Um, and you usually see the undercard guys um, on the greatest knockouts and, yeah. um, you know, the, the bloodiest matches because those guys go to war because they're trying to fight for that top spot. Yeah. Um, and so, again, the the Diaz uh, match delivered on the blood that I was looking for. Uh, the Moreno match delivered on the on the, the feels, <laughs> the feels, and the the, the surprise ending, and, and just the spectacular finish. And then the Adesanya fight was a little bit lackluster, you know, compared to Moreno's fight. Um, mm-hmm. But it's still a big fight. It still shows that he's the champion. And um, you know, now now we're left in speculation land to see what which fight will he take next. Will he stay at that weight? Or will he increase it to the to the next level and and fight for the championship there to become a double champion? So uh, we'll see on that. All right. Um, any other thoughts on UFC 263 before? Nah, we, it was a great yeah. fight card. Um, but I do want to touch on real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. Just to pr- like, there's a lot of talk about like, especially with these YouTuber fights and these like Logan Paul fights and stuff that the UFC is not paying their fighters what they should be getting paid. But they're not taking into consideration that the UFC is, like you said, if you catch a if you catch a promo, nine times out of ten, it's good enough to, to, to catch somebody's attention and get them interested enough in the fight, especially right. if people are talking about it. But they do so well of promoting, like you said, all their fighters. The whole card, had their they had their stories out there. You know what I mean? And the, and the UFC is doing this. It's not like... They're like, hey, like in boxing, like uh, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, Wilder, these guys have to promote themselves. They got to go out there themselves and promote it. But the UFC is just creating the narratives for them. Right. And really like making pe- – they're making people stars by their promotion, by putting them in the right positions. They're giving you good fights, and, and it's not fights that are like, well, we'll keep this guy undefeated, but it's fights that are like 
hey, this this is a good stylistic matchup, and the fans want to see it. You know what I mean? They're giving you fights like that. So I just think they're doing a great job with, with that aspect. And, and it warrants, like, maybe they're not paying out, but they probably have a higher cost of running their business. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, it, it's a barbarian sport, and it's it's – you know, it's not for the weak at heart. And so these guys will will put their bodies on the line. And yeah, whether the what whatever the payday is, some guys will command the money, others why other guys are just hungry for the position, right? So yeah. it becomes what what normal life is, which is if you're willing to do this for whatever the payday is, then that's that's who they'll take. Um but once these guys become big stars, they you know they um they do get they do they pay the top stars really, really well. Not as well as some other sports. And that's, but as that's you, the, but, the feedback, but as you right? should. And, and, right. and that's the thing. They're still promoting these guys. These guys are stars, but they're still giving them that backing. You know what I mean? It's not like they're get, they're becoming stars and it's just like, all right, well, now you bring us the viewers. You know what I mean? They're still trying to build them up even more. Right. I and think it, the, it, you know, one hand washes the other. Right. I think in the early days, the star power had to be there because the sport was not what it is today. Yeah, you needed your Chuck Liddell's, your Tito Ortiz's. Right, right. You needed those guys to be the stars, and that that's why those guys could command a higher salary. You had a Brock Lesnar in there later on. You had a Kimbo Slice who made his you know way in there. They were looking to build the brand and continue to grow. I think at this point in the game, they build the stars. Yeah. Right? And and they, their promotion machine is so good that it doesn't matter if you're a nobody um, and, and you, you know, you're moving up in the ranks. You're a good fighter. You put on a good fight. They're going to promote it, and your story is going to be compelling to some. I mean, Moreno. You know what I mean? Right, Moreno's right. a prime example of that because it's like I did. He got cut. Actually, I found out that he got cut three years ago from the UFC. Three years yeah. ago, he got cut, and now he's a champion. It's like, but and, and I mean, obviously, he had to put in the work. He had to have the good performances. I mean, it's a little luck, not luck, but like he got into a, 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 a one of the best fights at that weight division, I'm sure, in the history of UFC. You know what I mean? And like. And he and he he rose to the occasion, yeah. And now and now he's reaping the benefits of what the UFC does for for people, and he becomes a star because people like him. But not only do people like him, the UFC is getting people's eyes on him. Right, right. So he he's gonna he's gonna make money now, uh, moving forward. He's the champion, and they're gonna they're gonna make him a top built guy. And so he's money's coming his way from other areas. So hopefully he can he can cash in on that. Um, yeah, one last thing about, you know, so the UFC fight was great. I do want to mention again uh, that YouTubers versus TikTokers thing, just a complete abomination of, of boxing. Um, and it was, it, it, it was right in my backyard, right, right in Miami. Um, I mean, look, they didn't even have the foresight to put it in an indoor venue in Florida, <laughs> in Florida on a, on a, on an evening where you had thunderstorms and they had rain. They had, you know, it was just a ridiculous thing. Um, but The Floyd thing, I think, as well, it rained a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but listen, um, YouTubers out there, if you guys want to invite me to fight, I'll go for the big payday. 